Discussion. I would like to quote uh, Chairman Emeritus uh, Tata Group, uh, Ratan Tata, which he said that India has lost its confidence in the Indian world investors. Now, why is it so? He has elaborated saying that there are various forces in play which has actually contributed to this loss of confidence. Now, let's before begin with the, what are these forces which are acting against the country's upheaval in the investor confidence. Uh, I would like to talk about what exactly is the political uncertainty. Political uncertainty is uh, yeah. uh, political uncertainty is something where a government has come to a termination or when you have a social or uh, riot rest in unrest existing in a country or when you are having a political polarization. Now begin with the political polarization in this economy. What is political polarization? Political polarization is the divergence of political attitudes to ideological extremes and now that is the biggest challenge in, in an economy. Now uh, to explain or elaborate on this polit political polarization I would like to quote our very own United Progressive Alliance led Congress government. The Congress government when it was first came into power in the 2004 was known to be a rightist government which, which has tried to open up the FDI for various economies and it tried to become a more pro-industrialist country. But as you see, the Congress government or the UPA, which has been in 2012, is more focusing on populist regime, is more focusing on masses. The reason is simple, that it is just looking at the economic divide which is being prevailing in the country. 
the economic divide in the country is existing because of the inclusion which we failed to catapult in the bull run with the country has accrued at the last 10 years now uh, now i just we just wonder what does this political polarization has to do with the uncertainty which is existing the, because uh, i would like to quote a certain facts from the pwc so we finally told it to go and count the number of stars in the sky and we got given the exact figure the next minute then he got a bit nonplussed and then he told him to count the number of grains in the sand in all the beaches of the world and lo and behold in 10 minutes he gave him the answer and finally he had a brilliant brain wave he told the genie to go and count the number of political parties in India and believe me the genie is still counting till today hello my name is Girish K. Kaushik and I am here to speak about the vein of political uncertainty in India ever since the 70s India has constantly seen a certain amount of flux in the political system this political uncertainty has uh, has seen a constant of late, uh, almost to the extent that the uh, latter word in this term has become redundant. On a daily basis, we hear the words uh, policy paralysis, this uh, la lack of political will, etc. in the papers. This all points as the firm evidence to the former. We can also understand that uh, this policy paralysis everything as, uh, actually stems to the fact that uh, there is a great deal of political indiscriminate in this country in this nation. Uh, we can see various ministries, agencies, NGOs, constitutional and non-constitutional authorities, right from an, you know, an old enthusiastic CAD to withdraw a car which is all running, right? This climate of political uncertainty, this climate of indecisiveness is actually not just curtailed investment as the popular perception goes, but also has caused a host of other problems like runaway inflation, spiraling devaluation of the rupee, burgeoning CAD, rampant cronyism, unsafe corruption, you know, like the number of zeros in the 2D scam, the list goes on and on. Ever since independence, India, the world's largest democracy, has amalgamated the American federal system and the British parliamentary model to give the present multi-party system. This multi-party system, as we can see, is quite suitable because India being a nation of a plethora of diversity and multitude of resources, this is, this is, and this was and this is an experience. I am Dr. Sivani and wish you all a very promising picture for the Republic Day. We have assembled here upon our beloved Ambassador on Chilly Morning to celebrate the day which converted our uncertainty to certainty of freedom, justice and success. On this very day, we ended being a dominion of British Crown. Approximately 80,000 words, 395 articles in 32 parts in each schedule. This is what makes us this is what makes up the constitution of India. It took only 2 years, 11 months and 18 days to come up with this book. Not enough much of detail, let's focus on today's topic. I assert firmly to the view that political uncertainty is a boon to our nation. What do we understand by political uncertainty? We all rightly know that it is a culmination of phenomena of social unrest, impulsive policy by our, by our very own policy makers, shattering of the decision making process, and the electoral uncertainty. There is a very common belief amongst us that this political uncertainty affects the economic condition of this, of this particular area. But this has been proved wrong by the investors, be it our country or some other. Example from our country is a very good example of Andhra Pradesh, that is a uh, term point for uh, uh, Irangala coming out of law. There are around six big investors with PepsiCo, Cadbury, Colgate, Johnson & Johnson to name a few have invested 6500 crores of rupees and have enhanced employment by 18 and a half thousand. Now, I don't think any kind of economic instability is coming up because of the political, political uncertainty of this. And to name a few of uh, to take uh, an international example, we have the example of Palestine. It has been affected by the political uncertainty for a very long time. But the orange and housing industry in that area is flourishing like anything. Now, coming back to the non-economical part of the political uncertainty, what really happens in political uncertainty? People are in a dilemma who to vote. The most important right to lose the voters with some petty evidence of favor. The ones in a position are losing their own education in policy making and implementation. And what is that is good? The home parliament in most of the cases. Now what? When our country is passed, tells us that every time we have uncertainty in here, a very strong government comes into action and uplifts us from that pathetic situation. For example, after Polish Nehru's demise, we had an uncertain time. But who came into power? My own personal favorite, Lal Bahadur Shastri, for a few. 
I will be speaking against the motion as I believe that political uncertainty is surely a pain for the country. Think about the situation when the top bearer himself is indecisive and lost in the dark and is not able to find a way forward. In such a scenario, of ambiguity, what do we expect from the followers? Confusion, distrust, commotion and apprehension are the only things which will surround their mind and hearts. Unfortunately, this is the current situation of India. We chose people to represent us, to lead us, and they failed us. Be it the central government or some of the state governments, political turmoil is looming all over. Commotion over Telangana issue, DMK quitting UPA on Sri Lankan issue making the for government fragile, Nitish Kumar backing, backing out from the NDA, etc. some of the recent instances. Such a crisis is surely a pain for the country. Now some of us might be skeptical, but why a pain? Well, the reasons are obvious, but let's have a look. Will foreign industries enter the country with a very acute policy paralysis? Leave foreign companies. Will even Indian companies think about investing in such a scenario? No. Will the people still invest in stocks when the market is full of futile environment? The answer is again a big no. So all these will in turn give rise to a domino effect. Economic growth rate of India, its employment scenario for the huge youth population will be damaged. Other sectors like healthcare, manufacturing, education, external affairs, defense. The list continues because uncertainty at the health creates a ripple effect and de degrades all sectors. It also gives rise to distrust among people, not only towards the ruling party but towards the system as a whole, which in turn raises chances of strife, crime, corruption, brain drain and what not. In the external world, India's bargaining power and credibility in world markets, United Nations, BRICS and other cohorts reduces giving chance to the other emerging countries to search ahead of us. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, political instability is bad for any country. But let me tell you that we are not talking about any country, uh, any failed state we are not talking about, we are talking about India. Which is, on any standard, is a huge country with so many political differences, so many traditional uh, traditions, cultures, and so many level of income difference. So, uh, Mr. Ram Chandra he is a famous historian, he has once said that instability is the destiny of India. So, for us, he wanted to say the same thing because we have so many differences based on caste, religion and so many other parameters. So, if you see our constitution, which allows multi-party system, which allows a strong opposition, which perhaps they wanted to make a little bit instability in our system. That's the basic motive of this uh, particular uh, constitution formation. Now, if we if I take an example of uh, one of the famous uh, economist and he was a famous social scientist as well, Mr. Uh, Manuel Olson, he said that little bit instability and little bit instability both are required for the growth of the country. If you take an example of NDA government, it was particularly very stable government at that time and that time our country progressed a lot. After that government changes, but it still we were able to retain our growth. And in the second part, when UPA even got more and more majority, it was a comparatively more stronger government, then we failed to do our reform. So perhaps it is not political stability which is responsible for a country's growth. These are financial instability, <coughs> economic instability, and perhaps poli politi uh, policy reforms which are required for the growth of the country. So political instability, we are blaming this political instability slide, we are blaming to a gun that it kills the person.